Warm greetings. Today is Monday, October 6, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I'll be giving an update on Invest 95, which continues to organize over the tropical Atlantic. It is still projected to pass to the northeast of the Caribbean, though close enough for residents of the northern Lesser Antilles to continue monitoring its evolution. On the other hand, I briefly wanted to mention that residents of Mexico are keeping an eye on several disturbances and cyclones. We have Hurricane Priscilla, Tropical Storm Octave, and two additional areas being monitored by the National Hurricane Center for possible tropical development over the next few days. I also wanted to mention to residents of the eastern United States that long-range models are developing a low-pressure system east of North and South Carolina, which could find favorable conditions for tropical development. But we'll talk about that later since it's a long-range forecast. Now, let's zoom into the tropical Atlantic, where we will likely soon see the formation of a tropical depression. If we look at the infrared satellite imagery, we can see the tropical wave, or Invest 95, producing areas of disorganized convection. However, it continues to show signs of cyclonic organization, especially as we start to see the development of outer bands, which are indications of a cyclogenesis process. In fact, it's very likely that within the next 48 hours, a tropical depression will form here and eventually Tropical Storm Jerry. At 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center increased the chances of development to 70% in the next 48 hours and to 80% over the next 7 days. Notice that the potential development area remains just east and northeast of the Caribbean. However, it includes the northern half of the Lesser Antilles, where residents should continue monitoring in case the system passes close enough to bring some indirect effects. Meanwhile, for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, the current risk of this future cyclone passing directly over the region is near zero. Of course, we can never completely rule out a closer track, but for now, residents in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic can remain calm since model projections continue to be favorable for the region. This is evident in the specialized track models, where the vast majority maintain the system between 200 and 300 miles east-northeast of the Lesser Antilles, and for Puerto Rico, more than 400 miles to the northeast. Now, I know some people are asking about the other model tracks that show a much closer path, even over the northern Lesser Antilles. While that's not the most likely scenario, and one we can't entirely rule out, those models are primarily designed for intensity forecasting and tend to have a larger margin of error for track prediction. That's why we remain confident that the system will eventually move north-northeast, hopefully staying away from the Lesser Antilles. So, what's causing this system to turn north before reaching the Caribbean? We can see that in the following image, where yellow and orange colors indicate the Atlantic High Pressure System, which remains strong and will stay that way until at least Wednesday. Fortunately, a trough will move off the eastern United States, causing that high pressure to weaken, as we can see in the next image. Between Wednesday night and early Thursday morning, an opening develops that allows future Hurricane Jerry to move northward. And although we're confident in this projected path, there's still uncertainty about how strong the system might be as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. Most models maintain it as a strong tropical storm or a hurricane between Wednesday and Thursday, around its closest approach to the Caribbean. However, a few models are more aggressive strengthening it into a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane as soon as 72 hours from now. In fact, for reference, the FV3 model's latest run for Friday night shows future Hurricane Jerry with an impressive structure as it passes near the northeastern Caribbean. That's precisely why we've been watching closely in the northeastern Caribbean in case of any unexpected change. But today, confidence remains high that the track will stay east of the Caribbean, mainly because none of the global models currently show the future cyclone crossing into the region. Let's look at the latest model projections. Starting with the American model, GFS, within about 36 hours, it develops Tropical Storm Jerry, and between Thursday and Friday, it has it passing at its closest point just northeast of the Caribbean as a Category 2 hurricane, then continuing northward away from the region. Meanwhile, the European model, AKMWF, has remained very consistent, also keeping the system northeast of the Caribbean. Unlike other models, it insists the system should stay relatively weak as it passes the area perhaps as a tropical storm. The German model, ICON, after previously showing a powerful hurricane in earlier runs, now shows only a tropical storm passing about 100 miles northeast of the northern Lesser Antilles. The European AI model is one of the farthest west with its track, still keeping it just north and northeast of the Lesser Antilles, also as a tropical storm. Similarly, the UK model shows a weak tropical storm passing about 75 miles northeast of the Caribbean Thursday afternoon. So it's quite clear, the weaker systems pass closer to the Caribbean, while the stronger ones track farther away, between 200 and 300 miles east-northeast of the Lesser Antilles, and over 300 miles northeast of Puerto Rico. Looking at the ensemble members of Google's AI model, 
Most maintain a track that stays out of the Caribbean, though a few still bring it over parts of the northern Lesser Antilles. And while we remain confident in the general path, it's always important to monitor for any unexpected changes. The European Ensemble continues to consistently show the highest probability of the system remaining away from the Caribbean, though some weaker members bring it closer to the northern Lesser Antilles. However, again, that's the less likely scenario at this time. The latest American model ensemble also shows that most members keep the system northeast of the Caribbean, though a few still bring it closer to or over the northern Lesser Antilles and Virgin Islands. And while this scenario is less probable, it's precisely why residents of the northern Antilles and Puerto Rico should continue monitoring any possible changes. Remember, we remain confident in this projected path, but since meteorology is not an exact science, it's always important to keep a close eye on these systems. So, in summary, there's a high probability that we'll soon have a tropical depression, and within the next 48 hours, Tropical Storm Jerry should form. Atmospheric and oceanic conditions appear favorable for strengthening once it reaches the area east of the Caribbean, possibly becoming a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane, passing between 100 and 200 miles northeast of the islands. If you live in Puerto Rico or the northern half of the Lesser Antilles, you can remain calm but stay alert to any unexpected changes. And know that here at Hurricane Info, I'll continue closely monitoring the system and the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. If anything changes, I'll notify you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. And before I go, I'd like to ask you to give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. I hope you all have an excellent night. See you tomorrow.